Hey everyone, welcome back to The Rocketeer. I'm excited about today's video. We are going to cover how to make your own sugar-fueled solid rocket motor using off-the-shelf parts like this four grain case and this three grain case. We are going to use some amazing software on the Meteor website to study KN, burn rate, uh, Bates grains, and everything that you need to know to create your own motor. Now, I know what you're thinking. Don't you have to be like a crazy scientist or mad scientist or something like that to do this? Well, I'm here to tell you that no, you don't. Well, maybe just a little bit of nerd uh, doesn't hurt. But before we get to that, I want to cover something really quickly. And that is you guys have, as a community have really inspired me to make more videos. Your comments and your questions have challenged me and helped me to uh, create videos and increase our learning in how to build rockets and solid rocket motors. Now, if you are an international viewer, if you would stop by and just say hi, that would really encourage me and others too. Okay, let's get to the video. Once you register and log in, this is the screen that you will see. There are advantages to registering. It's free uh, in a new updated version of the software. There's more things you're gonna be able to do with it and it will store them if you register. So once you register and log in, what you wanna do is open up a file and I will provide these files for you in a link. This is a Loki four grain, it's a 480 motor and uh, this is the name that I gave it. You want to name your file so they make sense and once you make some changes to your file, you want to save it, uh, which is this download, and it will save it to your hard drive, your local hard drive. And then when you get ready to work on the file again, you just upload it. I have chosen Sorbitol as my fuel. Lightly milled is probably closest to what I use. There are some other choices in here, and I will come back and talk about those. You also can load your own profile if you know how to do that or what the values are for it. This is one for flex fuel. It's uh, very much a work in progress. So we'll see how that turns out. I'll be able to measure the performance of each fuel this summer. So that's coming in a later video. But for now, I'm gonna go back to, you can see the PNCP is loaded there or flex fuel. I'm gonna go back to the oxidizer, KNSB lightly milled. You enter your uh, combustion chamber size here. This is a 38 millimeter. You can choose imperial or metric. I will put the values for both of them on the screen. This is the nozzle throat diameter, which is really important. The combustion chamber length means not the overall case length, but the amount of fuel, the length of the fuel that you have in the motor. So I've chosen nine inches. What you want to choose for the grain configuration for a Bates grain is hollow cylinder. The grain diameter, uh, the core diameter is just the size of my core and I have that listed there. I'm going to scroll this just a little bit so we can see the bottom of it. Uh, so core surface is exposed for Bates grains. The grain outer diameter, that would be the outside diameter of your fuel grain, not the case itself. I uh, would we'll choose uh, the end surface are exposed on a Bates grain and the outer surface is inhibited, which means the outer surface has a thermal layer on it and it does not burn, at least not until the end of the burn. So that's the correct choices for this. I am using 2.25 inch grain segment links and four of them. So you hit submit. Once you upload, you hit submit. I've already actually uploaded it and it's generated the graph, but just so you know how that works. So once you input that data, this is the motor performance tab. You'll see that this motor turns out to be an H223. The thrust time is listed, max thrust, total impulse, and you can see on your screen there. So one of the things that we are concerned with when we design motors is the maximum pressure. For a 38 millimeter case, you don't really want to exceed a thousand pounds of pressure. And I prefer to keep it around, uh, say 750 pounds of pressure because uh, that gives you a little bit of marginal headway in case there's some air bubbles in your grain. Uh, maybe the density isn't quite right. Perhaps it's a really hot day and the motor burns a little bit faster. You need just a little bit of cushion at the top. And uh, so 560 pounds of pressure is pretty good. 
you, we could raise that a little bit. So the average pressure over time is uh, 512. Now the software generates this nice looking graph here, which can tell us a lot of information as well. This is what's known as a flat profile, meaning that the thrust curve is fairly flat. But this tells me that the burn time was a little over 1.3 seconds. It actually was listed at the top. But if you mouse over this graph, it gives you a wealth of information, which is really cool. You can see the beginning KN. Uh, KN and thrust are related to one another. I may produce another video uh, shortly that describes a KN and how that uh, affects the pressure of the motor. But for now, we'll just keep an eye on the pressure. Uh, as I scroll through the burn, you can see that it updates here. This is really mature software and it gives lots of data that, that can really help you design your own motors. You can see at the top, uh, there's 240 some Newtons of thrust and the KN is 362, which is probably around the max there. And then it tapers off a little bit towards the end of the burn. So what happens if we change the number of Bates grains? Let's uh, scroll to the top. Right now we're using four. So I'm going to choose this one that uses the same size nozzle, a number 19, and five Bates grains. Okay, the nozzle size is the same. Uh, that is a number 19 nozzle. If you buy a complete Loki motor, that's the nozzle you would get with it. Now you can specify a different nozzle and I'll take a look at that in just a minute. As far as nozzle throat size goes, you can't guess on this. It has to be perfect. It has to be at least really close. Uh, a lot of beginning motor designers just choose some random throat size and oftentimes the motor will cato. Uh, so if you want to be able to uh, keep your hardware intact, you really need to know that. And that's where the software comes in very handy. Okay, so all the other parameters are the same. Same fuel, same throat. Let me scroll down just a little bit. The only difference here is, is that we have chosen five Bates grain segments instead of four. And that makes the Bates grain segments a little bit shorter because we have five of them. Now, the fuel length is the same as the previous screen that I showed you. So there's no changes there. It's just that we have added five grams instead of four. And what that gives us is two more ends that are burning because we have five grains. The, the core is burning, the outside is inhibited, but each end of the core burns. So when you add another grain, you get more burning surfaces. And that in turn changes the profile. So we'll look at that next. Now this is called a regressive profile here. It starts out high and then it uh, kind of tapers off towards the bottom here. So you would use this type of profile if you were going to launch say on a windy day, if you had a heavy rocket that you wanted to get off the pad uh, or a large size rocket that you needed to get up quickly, you could use this kind of grain configuration to get a higher speed off the launch rail. Okay, let's open another file. Let's take a look at, let me scroll up here a bit, a three gray motor. Load that, give that just a second, and I'm gonna scroll down just a little bit. There we go. Now this type of burn is called a progressive burn. And what you have here is uh, you would experience a slower lift off, maybe a more realistic lift off of your rocket, and it builds thrust as the motor burns. So you would probably use this during a low wind day or just uh, when you wanna have just a little bit slower off the rail. So you can see here that the profile starts fairly low. Well, I wouldn't call it really low, but it starts at a lower point and builds up. And again, what you have to do is check and make sure that you don't overpressurize at the end of the burn and here we're at uh, 591 PSI, so we're still in good shape. Let's open up one more and see what happens if we reduce the nozzle size. Right now, this is a number 19 nozzle. Let's open this up and check out another example with a number 17 nozzle. Okay, we can see now that the average pressure is quite a bit higher. We still have the same neutral burn, 
but the uh, pressure from some of the other previous examples was around 560 pounds and now we're up to 680. So as you can see, small amounts of changes in the nozzle design will really change the pressure and the burn of the motor quite a bit. We are now generating about uh, 680 uh, pounds of pressure, which is still good. It's still within a reasonable boundary. Classes went up to an H240 because now we are supplying more pressure and it also makes it the motor a little bit more efficient uh, the higher that the pressure is. And we can see too that the burn time is slightly lower than it was before. Okay, so that gives you a pretty good idea of how when you change the parameters, how it changes the profile for the motor, adding more grains, changing the nozzle size. Now it's your turn. Experience the software and experiment with it and start changing some of these parameters. Don't forget to save them to your local hard drive so that you can upload them later. Now I just want to take just a brief second and say that this is great software. It is worthy of a donation. If you can donate uh, anything to the project, that would be great. Even if you can't do it uh, today, maybe you could do it some other time when you're using it. That inspires the creators to add more features to the program and to keep working on it. And this is an invaluable tool. It's one that I've used quite a bit and I've been very successful with it. Okay, well that uh, ends today's tutorial. I'll come back soon uh, with an updated version where I talk a little bit more about KN and how that works. This will give you a pretty good idea how the program works and we'll get you up and running quick. All right, I'll see you soon.